Hi, everybody. <laughs> nice to see you again. Uh, so right today, we're in here, in this room, we're going to talk about something that FINRA have presented at one of our special interest groups, the RegTech Innovation Special Interest Group. This is something that FINOS has for topics such as this, to talk about the digitization of regulatory rules and helping industry participants uh, meet their compliance requirements and, and collaborate together. So um, as part of the SIG, um, I think maybe six months ago or so, the FINRA team came to us and said, look, we're lo working on something that we would like to showcase to the industry. And they came to the SIG and they presented their, their pilot. And, and then uh, month, about a month ago, they came back and they said, look, we, we have a version. We have a first version live and we'd like to show, show it to, to the community, which we did. And we've had several of those. And today, we, uh, the FINRA team is here to present um, again um, what they've done and to collect feedback. It's really, really important that we get feedback. And it's important for FINOS. It's important for FINRA. It's important for the community to get input on what you guys think, whether this is important, whether this is going in the right direction. So um, I'm going to hand it over to the FINRA team. They're going to tell you a little bit more about the tool and how to use it, why it's there, what, what the purpose is. Um, but also think of questions and feedback and input that you would like to give back to this team. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Alex Kachaturian. I'm a director in the Office of Financial Innovation at FINRA. I'm here with my colleagues Afshin Adabaki in the General Counsel's Office and Adi Rostogi in Technology. So as, as Jane said, thank you for that intro. We're going to talk about our Machine Readable Rulebook Initiative. So real, I'll be real quick in my uh, intro remarks here before we dive into the demo. Um, first, we're going to talk about the goals of this initiative. What are we trying to accomplish and what are the use cases? Second, we're going to talk about how we went about accomplishing the, the, the prototype that we've launched on October 20th. Um, how we got here. We're going to do a demonstration, as I mentioned. And then lastly, we're going to close out with what's next. What is the way forward? What is the, the future of this project? And what does it hold? And you know, what, we're kind of, what kind of comments we're seeking? So on the project goals, what, uh, what, what are we looking to do with this machine readable rulebook initiative? So it has three components to it. First is the creation of a regulatory taxonomy. So that's essentially a hierarchical categorization of key business, legal, and regulatory terms that you can use to filter and search through the FINRA rulebook. It's sort of like an index um, that allows a, a, a way to facilitate search functions. Second is a, the, the delivery mechanism for that taxonomy is called the FINRA rulebook search tool, or FIRST. That's exactly what that filter cross-filtration system is. Essentially, it allows you to look at different topics across various categories and narrow down your search of potentially applicable FINRA rules. Um, this taxonomy and the application of the taxonomy to the FINRA rulebook was done as a manual effort by FINRA attorneys. It was brought to life uh, through the user interface and the API uh, through our technology team. And, and that's the third component. Uh, speaking of the API of the machine readable rulebook initiative is it'll, and that's what truly makes it machine readable is that all of this content and this very rich content developed you know manually again um, that can be pulled in through the API to map to your internal policies and procedures you can get uh, updates on rule content changes uh, which which Adi is going to talk about so how does this help and what are we looking to do with this? It can help uh, in a manual search for someone on a, on a firm, let's say, who is looking to send a question to their chief compliance officer, but can maybe narrow down that, that question or streamline the question by uh, clicking these different fields and find the potentially applicable rules. Um, you can manage regulatory change through the API by getting automated updates and regulatory mapping. And broadly speaking, a, a, another goal of this tool is we think that it can support the broader reg tech eco, ecosystem, not only for you know, firms that offer these types of services, a new way of doing compliance, but also um, we're working with our regulatory counterparts around the world. So 
tie that into how we got here. So we've currently done this for 40 FINRA rules. These, these rules represent about half the rulebook views or half the visits really to, to FINRA.org more broadly. Um, we created a pilot in 2018 after launching an initial special notice on this topic. We received feedback to move forward. We demoed the pilot, tested it with a number of firms. Uh, we sent out surveys and ran a, uh, essentially a cost-benefit analysis or an economic analysis of the, the benefits to firms. Um, we presented and discussed, as, as Jane mentioned, to, to Finos. We've also presented to major uh, securities trade bodies. We've created a uh, working group of compliance professionals at broker-dealers to vet and check and opine on our taxonomy and the user interface. We uh, partnered up with a prominent reg tech firm to check the global consistency of our taxonomy terms. And um, we had an internal process of, of attorneys uh, creating these tags, applying them to the rules, and then subject matter experts in the general counsel's office reviewing them. And with that, I'll turn it to another general counsel colleague, Afshin Adabaki, to walk through a demo. And I will go to the website here to uh, show it. Great, um, thank you. Can this show the, uh, the website that we have? I don't know if it's uh... OK. That worked now. Great. Thank you, Alex. Um, my name is Afshin Adabaki. I'm a special advisor and associate general counsel in our Office of General Counsel at FINRA. I'm also co-lead uh, on this proje project with uh, Jaime Werke, who is in the audience, and some of you may have heard from last night. Um, speaking of last night, uh, for those of you who attended um, that event, uh, there was a lot of excitement, uh, I felt, with everyone who presented in terms of what open source means to them, in terms of what um, reg tech, um, and there are a lot of acronyms right out there, uh, means and what that evolution will look like. And so, you know, I went back to the hotel room and I'm like, what excites me? I've been a regulatory attorney for 20 plus years. Uh, rulemaking, as some of you may know, uh, is not the most exciting job. Um, <laughs> you know, there are a lot of layers of review and there's oversight um, and ultimately you get an approval uh, and then you have to start interpreting that rule. Um, but when I think of this project, um, I'm like, well, this is what excited, you know, excites me um, as, a, as an attorney, a regulatory attorney. Um, for me, regulatory compliance is what drives um, market stability, um, which goes along with investor protection, and, and together you're gonna, you have a, you know, a, if you have a cohesive market that, that, is, that the folks are, um, apply compliance uh, appropriately to, um, you're going to have a nourish, uh, nourished and, and viable market. Um, if you don't, um, it can be disastrous. Um, because where there's no confidence um, in the market, you know, things fall apart. You know, obviously, historically, there are many examples, um, including some recent ones. So we think that leveling the compliance playing field is a great starting point. Um, because you can be reactive and enforce your rules, and that's one way of making sure that folks are compliant with this objective, regulatory compliance. Um, the other way is to be proactive. How can you be proactive? Well, you can educate folks on what rules mean. Uh, you don't need um, necessarily the subject matter expert or an attorney who's practiced for you know, gener you know, decades to be able to give the, the initial guidance, which is, hey, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a firm, I'm starting up, and I want to understand, you know, what this world, this, this world is, this, the, the FINRA rule book, the rule set, what are the various requirements, and what specific rules apply to my type of business. Um, and that's what I mean by leveling the playing field. I think ultimately you probably have to go to counsel to, you know, for the finer points of things, especially contracts and things like that. But to understand the basic compliance requirement, we think this is the kind of tool that will get you there. Um, Many larger firms have these types of tools in-house. Um, they have the resources, the resources, they've built them. And there are third parties that perhaps provide um, this type of resource as well. But to my knowledge, it's never come from a US regulator. Um, I mean, I would expand that. I think you know, there are probably just a couple, a handful of international regulators who've done something like this. This is a first step. 
it's a prototype, um, but we think that the future is bright um, in this space. So what, we, what we've done here is we've basically curated our rule book. Uh, we've only applied it to 40 rules, um, Alex mentioned. It's a prototype, so you know, the, the very labor intensive, and that's why we're at this stage. And we haven't, you know, we didn't, we haven't done the whole rule book yet. Um, and we, we curated it. We, we took every rule, and by the way, our rule book goes back to about 80 years. Uh, that's when the first set of rules came around. Uh, folks that obviously um, wrote in a different style, um, maybe using different language, uh, a little more legalese. And over time, you know, there's been a drive to make it more, uh, less legalese, more user friendly, so that folks can comply with these obligations. Um, so what we did is we went to each rule, um, read line by line, and basically deconstructed the requirements into um, tags, terms, um, taxonomy. You know, we use interchangeable um, concepts for that. And then we indexed them um, in the format you see before you. We created these summary topics, which are high-level fundamental concepts. There are eight of them, um, you know, over, overlapping concepts. Um, for example, security type. Um, you know, that, that's like, you know, we, we broke it down at that level between equity and debt, just as a general matter. Uh, and we'll get into some details of what, what else we did with, with, that, with, with, with this. But what the summary topics allow you to do is just immediately be able to find uh, a related concept. Now, one would say, well, why can't I just search your rule book or go to Google or some other um, browser, search browser, and just find what I'm looking for? And, and the, the, my response would be, this allows you to um, learn, uh, educate yourself, because it has a browse functionality. You may not know what you're looking for until you find it. Um, and that may take a while. This allows you to look for a variety of terms within this universe and figure, oh yeah, that's what I'm looking for. I'm interested in this other thing. Maybe I can overlap these two things and see what, what result I get. It's, it's really advanced um, search function in terms of regulatory um, um, requirements. Um, just to give you an example, uh, we're going to pick um, firm type. And this is a firm type that we use internally. Um, firms are aware of it. It's public as well. Um, this is a classification that we use. So, you know, generically, they're capital markets, investment banking firms, uh, clearing and carrying, diversified retail, trading and execution. That's your general concept. But as I said in the, in the beginning, if you're a startup firm um, and you are interest, you're just going to do capital uh, markets and investment banking, um, pretty, you know, narrower set of rules apply, you would think. And out of the 40 rules, um, you know, if you go to the last page, I think there are about 32 um, rules here that apply. So right there, you've winnowed down the results, and that's a great starting point. Uh, whereas before, you had to hire someone, um, you know, pay them consulting fees to figure out, okay, what should I do to start? This does that for you. Um, we do have a disclaimer. You shouldn't rely on it as, as a legal, uh, a legal advice and regulatory advice. You ultimately have to make your own decisions and um, you know, read the rules to figure out whether they, they truly apply to your business model. But at least it gets you to, to that starting point. If you're a diversified firm, which is you know, the, the you know, global range of products, um, all 40 rules apply. Um, it'll come up in a second. Um, it's, you know, there it is, all 40 apply. So right there, you know, we think that's a plus. Now, what's that additional benefit? I, I, use, I always use the example of you know, my first day or my first week you know, 20 years ago. Uh, my assignment was go and find all the FINRA rules that have a disclosure uh, obligation in them. And I was like, oh, it's easy. I'll just, you know, back then there was no search, but I'm like, I'll just open each rule and type in, you know, control F disclosure. Um, I missed about 30, 40%. The reason is we typically, um, we may not use the term disclosure in that form um, to, um, to mean, uh, we, we use different terms to mean disclosure without using the exact term disclosure. So what we've done here is under obligations and duties, you have to uncheck those. Um, we just went ahead out of the 40 rules, and we identified all of, the, all of those, if you click on disclosure, that have a disclosure obligation, whether or not they use the word disclosure. That, again, it's a, you know, I think, plus plus, right? Um, for that junior, not even junior, I mean, for any compliance person, um, it does that task for you. Um, and the sort of next functionality that goes with this is what we call cross-browsing or cross-filtering. Um, if you now want to pick, uh, let's say, um, customer type, again, this is the higher level of bifurcation, right? Pretty basic, institutional versus retail. You have your retail customer type, and um, 
you want uh, to understand KYC, AML obligations, and you want it in the context of the account opening process. So you do account opening, servicing, or termination, and you get the, the two rules, and by their names you can tell by their titles, that apply to both know your customer, which is a term of art, as well as anti -money, AML, anti-money laundering. Um, now, you open these rules, um, and you can do a reverse lookup. Um, you pick any of the terms that we tag, which appear there, as Alex is showing. And if you click, I'm just going to pick a random term, qualifications and, and registration. And it will now look up every rule that has that tag associated with it. So you can do that type of lookup as well. Um, the other element of this is these detailed topics that we came up with. And we had to, there's a dilemma, right? As we started this project, we're like, you know, is it better to over tag and then decide later, hey, we went too far and then reduce the number to make it more usable or, you know, under tag? We opted for over tagging and this is the result. So um, just to give you an example, investment products. At the higher level, summary topics, you notice we had bifurcated, as I said, equity and debt. Here, we go deeper. Every rule um, that has a specific investment product identified in that rule, we've tagged um, with the corresponding term. Um, direct DPP, it's a term of art. Um, these, are, these are vehicles that have flow through tax consequences. You know, again, two rules here just by way of example. There's some duplication, equity securities, you know, identified twice, both in the summary and the detail, detail topics. Uh, just another example, foreign securities, Alex, if you go down, you know, which rules apply to foreign securities, specifically, um, what's right there under fixed income, you know, it's a generic concept, foreign securities, it's not really identifying the, the specific type of security, but there you go. The, those are the rules out of the 40 that have a foreign securities element within them. You still need to read the rule to understand the obligation and where the foreign securities term appears and what, how it relates to you, um, but we've done it. And the other thing we did, um, just in the prior example, is when we did account opening, servicing, or termination, that's not a term that we use. We came up with that term because it's a procedural concept, right? There's an account opening or onboarding process. Our rules don't specifically may, you know, use that uh, in terms of identifying what the obligation is, that term, but we came up with the phrase and we're telling folks these rules, uh, just open account opening, servicing, or termination uh, under ACC, under summary topics. Uh, we're saying these rules right here have an account opening processing, uh, sorry, account opening, um, servicing, and termination component within them. Suitability is a good example. It's in the first page. The obligation to make sure that if you recommend the security to a customer, it's suitable for them based on your analysis. Well, in our view, that's clearly uh, both an account opening, right, when you're on board, as well as a servicing concept. So we tag the account opening, servicing, termination to this rule. Um, the last piece of this is um, free text searching. So in addition to providing the browsing functionality, you can search for the tagged concepts um, by free text search. You put disclosures in quotes. Um, it does pull up the, act, the express references and rules to disclosures, but if you, you know, you know, throughout, you know, there you go, 2360, I think is your, no, sorry. 2241. Um, 2241, yeah, so that's the first instance where disclosure is showing up um, also as a tag term. Um, you know, we use disclosure as an example. There are other examples um, as, as well, but you can do free text search, um, which uh, will pull up the tag terms in that search. Um, as well as the express terms. Um, so, you know, we think this is the future. Um, I think lawyers will still have job guarantee. They have to read the rules and figure out what it all means. But we think this is compliance education, which will help everyone. And again, we're going to bring back this, the beginning subject, you know, regulatory, regulatory compliance ensures stability. And that's key to um, um, the growth of the financial markets and obviously making sure that uh, investors are protected. Thank you. Afshin for that robust uh, legal detail. So um, as Afshin noted, you, we've essentially deconstructed the rules here. And I'm going to have Adi come up and talk about the, the API. So the, the machine readable aspect of this is all of this content, this carefully curated content, can be pulled in through an API uh, and map to your internal policies and procedures, and Adi can walk through the technical details of that. 
Hi, uh, I'm an Adi Rastogi and I'm an associate product manager in the data dissemination team of FINRA. Um, so the API aspect of this is can be found on the API Developer Center. Um, API Developer, just to give a little uh, insight into what API Developer Center is, it is a FINRA strategic initiative to sub, uh, support automation goals of member firms as well as broader financial industry. And it makes sense to uh, have the FINRA Rulebook API available here as well. So you can come in here in the documentation and here you can see the FINRA Rulebook API. So FINRA Rulebook API provides FINRA rule content, uh, both the current version of the rule as well as the historical version of the rule. Um, along with that, the taxonomy that uh, Afshin and Alex uh, from OGC and OFI, they developed. We took that taxonomy, also made it available um, in the API as well. So the rulebook API has now evolved into uh, a tagged FINRA rulebook API. So in the API con rule content that you'll receive, now there'll be additional fields that will be available, summary topics and detailed topics that you saw right here um, in the tool. So in the tool, you can see summary topics and real topics. The same thing would be made available via the API as well. Uh, just to give an insight as to what that content would look, what the API response would look like. This is the sample request of the API. Uh, of course, here we only have the sample data available. Uh, and you can see that it, this is the sample response for 2090 rule. Um, you can see the end date says null because uh, 2090 doesn't have an end date right now. You can see the detailed topics here. Uh, as well as if you keep scrolling down, you'll see the rule content, the start date of the rule. Um, so this way, this API can be used to ingest the rule content and map it to the internal systems, uh, to your own internal systems. Um, another endpoint that we have provided here is the post call, which is a slightly which offers slightly more features. So for example, one of the features here is that um, not only can you, with the other endpoint, the get endpoint, you can get all the data. With this, you can also do, run sort of like a filtering, but through the API. So you can see here what it, essentially what it means here is that uh, give me all the rules that pertain to customer type retail. Now, um, I, uh, this is the FINRA rulebook API, but uh, in our, uh, when we launched this uh, machine readable rulebook initiative, we also said that we are working on another API which will allow you to get auto updates uh, for any changes to rulebook content. Um, and I'm pleased to announce that two days ago, we launched notification API, and the first use case for notification API is FINRA rulebook notification. So what essentially happens here is that uh, if a user comes in and subscribes to FINRA rulebook notification API, what they will receive is, uh, let's say, uh, let's, uh, we go in and say, okay, 12, something changed in 1210. So they'll, the people who have subscribed to our notification API, the systems that have subscribed to that, they'll receive a notification saying something changed in 1210, updated. Um, if a new rule is created, it will say action created. And then uh, this API, with the response received in this API, the systems can call the FINRA con uh, rule content API and uh, you know, download the latest current data. Um, I'll turn it over to Alex to go over the next uh, steps and move forward. So thank you, gentlemen. Um, so we we launched the rule book, as, as I believe I mentioned, on October 21st, 2022. Um, and we we accompanied the, the three elements, right? The, the taxonomy, the first search tool, and the API. And, and we accompanied that with a special notice requesting comments. Um, the special notice essentially kind of walk through in, in greater detail, of course, everything we've covered here, what the use cases are, what the journey is. Um, and we set out a series of questions to the public um, asking how they interact with the FINRA rulebook, how they find the first search tool and the API working for them, um, how it's benefiting them and what, what, it's, you know, what, what the use cases are, et cetera. Um, and then substantive feedback. Uh, could the tags be amended, expanded, changed, et cetera? And most importantly, perhaps, future development. So what's the, the next phase of this project going to look like? So we have the, the special notice here. 
um, FINRA requests comment on its machine readable rulebook initiative. Um, and you can scroll through here and see all of the details. And then at the, at the very end here, so this is our economic analysis I referenced earlier, the very end here is, is all of these questions. So the comment period is open until December 20th. So we uh, welcome, we encourage your feedback, your comments. We do have a booth uh, just on the, the, the main floor downstairs. Please come by. We have a, a you know, few of us sitting here waiting to answer your questions and uh, engage further. Uh, we can also open it up now. We think we might have a couple minutes if there's any, any questions folks want to ask about the, the initiative or, or the tools that we've put out there. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we were at the booth. Thank you. So the okay. So I so I'll, I'll try to break the the, the question down as I, as I understood it. So um, the question is: Are we doing something to allow an integration of this content that we created with with financial institutions? Um, and do you see some sort of future that's going to maybe allow sort of automated machine executable regulation? That I'm going to try to boil it down that way. Okay. So I saw a head nod. Um, answer the first question, yes, we have the API, and the API is what allows the ingestion of our content, all of this carefully curated content, into firms' internal systems. They can map it to their internal policies and procedures and keep track of regulatory change management through the notification API. Per our reg tech vendor who we partnered with throughout the development process, those are two of the, the biggest use cases that they're seeing from financial services firms, so that's number one. The second question is, what do we envision as sort of machine executable? Uh, any, any question on what the future of this project will turn into should be addressed in the special notice. That is that we're, we put out a prototype at this point. What this will turn into, um, it's going to take some time to understand what the industry needs, uh, what the industry is looking for, and where it'll go. At this time, what we've created is a taxonomy to facilitate the search and the API to ingest that content. Uh, where this goes down the line, it's gonna depend on uh, a number of factors, including the appetite externally, as well as internally. So I hope that uh, addresses your question, sir. Oh, Elliot, please. Yes. Thank you. 
Uh, Elliot, mic you got a microphone coming your way. Yeah, so um, within FINRA, we have a series of different initiatives using machine learning. And a lot of these initiatives are, are, not, uh, are to try to make it so that a lot of the documents that we receive are processed in a standard way. So this is a lot of the reason for putting this technology behind it so that there's a standard way of, of, uh, of analyzing the documents, a standard way of critiquing whether there, there are certain rules that are satisfied or there's procedures that are, that are standard within there. So it's not only that, but also looking uh, initiatives to look across the industry in terms of you know helping us better understand what the standards are. Again, this is all done you know with uh, with, with technology. So we are there's separate initiatives that are going exactly I think in the direction that you, that you're you're, uh, you're you're saying is desirable. Does that answer, that answer your question? Okay. <laughs> and shameless plug, if you have more ideas towards that, come to the Reg Innovation SIG, which meets yep. monthly, and, and put those ideas out, out there in the public. The, the issues are open. We, we put out a notice every time the meeting meets. You can record your ideas, and, and just like FINRA, come and, and discuss them together with us. We're out of time, but I think we had one more question over here. Just repeat the question. Uh, do you want to answer that? Yeah, just, you, know, sorry. you can come here. Sorry, yeah. So um, we have been discussing it with our uh, fellow regulators. Um, the, the, the one thing is, you know, using the SEC as an example, you know, probably a decade ago beyond that, they, they created some form of taxonomy application for, their, um, for the Edgar filings, for instance. So they, 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 you know, there is some basis to, to work on uh, there. But what we've done here is the next step. Um, and I think, you know, yeah, the hope is there will be a future where there's agreement that the terms that we're using um, are standard. So when we say disclosure, our fellow regulators mean the same thing, et cetera. And then hopefully globally as well. Uh, but there's some things uh, that we can't, we will probably not agree on because we use different terminology, and that's just the way it's going to be. I just want to add one thing before I know it's beyond our time. You asked about interpretation. We, we have stayed away from interpreting rules. I'm going to use disclosure again. If a rule is unclear whether disclosure is re required, we have not tagged that rule as a disclosure um, type rule because that's interpretive. Um, so that's, you know, we've, we've tried to keep it within the four corners of clear uh, obligations versus the interpretive gray areas. And that's why I said you're still going to need the lawyers <laughs> to, to parse these rules. Thanks. Well, thank you, everybody. Thanks for your questions. Thanks for your engagement. Like I said, we, we have more of these discussions at the Reg Innovation SIG on a monthly basis. Please, please, please comment to FINRA. Post your comments on their website because this is important work. And digitization of rules is a long, long process. <laughs> uh, so the more... Um, uh, FINRA and other institutions like this, our community gets feedback and input, um, and a lot of the input in the um, creation of this is going to come from this community too, which is why we're trying to keep it very, very open. Thank you for coming, and thanks FINRA for presenting. Thank you. Thanks.